what I'm going to do with this tutorial is I'm going to show how relatively simple it is to take a SQL database and display the information from the SQL database and bind it to controls and display them display the information onto a web page. I'm using Visual Studio 2008 but if you don't have the full version of Visual Studio you can use Microsoft Visual Web Developer which is a free product that you can download uh, from Microsoft and you should be able to follow along just about step by step with with uh, even the free version but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a database that is uh, going to have all of the NFL teams and it's going to be split up by division and what we're going to do is we'll have a control on a web page that you can use a drop down menu choose the division and then it's going to display the teams that are in that division on to the web page so I already have here a database that's created and actually what that is is it's the default database that the ASP.NET configuration tool creates when you want to add users to to log in and also to assign users to roles and this this actually has the all the tables and all of the uh, data already in it for the, the user store what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to that through the server explorer and I've already done that and I've expanded the tables here this is the the dot the ASP net database you can see that there's a there's several tables but those are all uh, used with the 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 user information and the roles uh, and we're not going to touch any of that stuff in this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to add our own tables to this database and then we're going to use that data to bind to and uh, display on our web page so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on tables and I'm going to add a new table and that's going to come up over here and this is going to be my divisions table so what I'm going to do is the first column name is going to be division ID that's going to be an integer data type now I'm not trying to teach you how to design uh, uh, databases right now but uh, just basically how to display the information once once it's created so I'm not going to get too involved in what the data types and primary keys and other things that are related to uh, databases but division so we have our division ID and our division and I'm gonna make this varchar we'll just leave it as varchar 50 so I can use 50 characters I don't need that many uh, I'm not going to make this nullable because I want this to be my primary key and I'm going to move this up a little so I can come down here and make this the ID and I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to call this divisions that is where we're going to store our divisions I'm not going to put any data in there yet but I'm going to make another table and I'm going to add a new table and I'm going to have this be my teams now the first thing I'm going to have is a team ID and that's going to be an in integer data type and that's also going to be the primary key now I'm going to make a division division ID which is going to be a foreign key that's going to be linked to the divisions database and that was a var no that was an int and we also need the team name team name and that's going to be varchar we'll just leave that as a varchar 50 and I'm going to make this again I'm going to make that a identif identity spec and th this stuff here increment and seed is it just means that it's going to start with a one and it's going to increment each time I add a new team so this is going to be my teams table I'm going to say OK and I'm not going to do all of the data now but I just want to show I'm going to what, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add one thing to each of these tables I'm going to go show the divisions data 
and there should be nothing in here yet. So the first division I'll put in is I'll put in the AFC East and I'll put in the AFC uh, North and I'm going to close that for now. It saves on its own so you don't have to save it. Then I'm going to go to the teams. I'm going to show the table data on the teams and there will be nothing here. In the first one I'm going to say the division ID is 1 and I'm going to go ahead and put New England Patriots. The next one is division ID is 1 and I'll do New York Jets and I'm just doing this based on uh, the standings right now. New York Jets and I'll go ahead and close that for now and I'm going to pause this and I'll put the rest of the divisions and the teams in uh, to catch up so we don't have to watch this whole process through this video. So I've completed filling in the tables here. Here's my division table and this is my team table. I have all the teams with their corresponding division IDs next to them and I can go ahead and close those tables out which takes me back to the default ASPX page which is just an active server page that we're going to drop some data onto at this point. Now in order for a web application to talk to a database it needs some configuration. It needs actually a connection string. Uh, there's a little more to it than that but Visual Studio, Studio actually simplifies a lot of this stuff. You'll see that I can simply take this, I'm going to go ahead and take the divisions table, I'm going to drag that out onto my web form, drop that off inside that div, and you'll see that a lot of this stuff will be built automatically. Uh, it made two controls by me dragging that out. It made a data source control, which if you look up here you'll see that it's a data source control that it auto names SQL data source 1 it gives me a connection string and all the queries for deletion insertion select and updating uh, gave me the parameters for that database or for that data table and basically by just dragging and dropping I, I've created this entire uh, uh, SQL data source now it, it makes this grid view control which automatically binds it to the SQL data source 1 control that we just created and so we have with that simple drag and drop all ready to, dis to display grid view control on our web form so I'll go ahead and save that and we'll debug which is going to launch my default browser in this case on this computer it is Google Chrome take a few seconds to launch the local server local host, uh, SQL server and then there we go our web web page is up and it shows the division ID in the division and there is our grid view control as it's shown on the browser uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop debugging which will take me back to the default ASPX page and you'll see all that co all that code that it did for us. We don't have to type. We just dra drag and drop the, the table onto that form. Now I'm going to go ahead and close this, uh, this default page. And I'm going to show you really quick before we go to part two. Inside the web config file, this connection string was added for me. So now if I, need, if I go to another web page and I need to use that connection string, I can just refer to it as this name. I won't have to type all this stuff. I won't have to duplicate my code. I can actually just use the ASP.NET. I could actually give it a much simpler name, but I'm going to leave it at default for now. But uh, and it's not important to understand all this stuff. Once, the, once you see how this all comes together, it will probably make a little bit more sense. Uh, this configuration stuff can get a little complicated but in part two we're gonna go ahead and build uh, our teams page and we're gonna display 
the information from the team's uh, data table onto the web form.